Sometimes what happens in a boxing corner can be as entertaining as the fight itself. When he's coming, drop left overhead! Once again, in part four of this series, we take a close look at the 60 second intervals between rounds and show you other memorable moments that took place in a boxing corner. At the end of the seventh round, Thomas Matisse's corner got confused as to what round was next. It's the sixth round. It's the sixth round? It's the eighth. It's the eighth? It's the fucking eighth. It's the last fucking round. Whatever the fuck it is, you better win. It's the last round, bro. In part three of this series, trainer Barry Hunter demanded that Franchon Cruz Desern's weave be taken off her head. Hey, get this shit off her head now. If you thought that was harsh, wait until you see the hard slap and stern warning that Hunter gave Lamont Peterson during his points win over Dieri Jean. Hey, wait the Listen, I'm not gonna keep telling you the same thing. You understand me? You got to stay behind that chair. Keep your fucking hands up. You understand me? You're making this fight closer than it gotta be, Carl. After losing every round and taking a lot of punishment against Miguel Cotto, Cesar Bazan went back to his corner at the end of round eight and got an unexpected instruction from his trainer. Anytime you see a fighter with a slight here, another right over the top. Ooh. Oh, good right hand. Saying a lot. And that's saying a lot. Oh. oh, hard left hand over the top for Cotto. Another hard jab for Cotto. Cotto coming into this round with some bad intentions. Oh. And here we go. Third right. Not throwing anything. Uh, yeah. Let's go out there and finish him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing out loud. Go out and finish him and say something. for you to say. He just started laughing. <laughs> he says, have you been watching this fight? <laughs> what fight are you watching? Oh, that was a great moment. Go out and finish him and Cesar just starts laughing. <laughs> Three weeks before his undisputed middleweight title fight against Marvin Hagler, John Mugabe was baptized by priest Father Anthony Clark. Left hand just a minute ago. A test of physical strength now, and Hagler's yeah, landed a good right. combination. And he can't move that Mugabe back. My God, Tim, what punishment this Mugabe's taken, and he's still there. Better not punch himself out. John Mugabe has some tough customer. Takes another shot. He's hit, he's hit Hagler with some good shots, too, Tim. After eight rounds of a brutal toe-to-toe -to -toe battle, Mugabe began to tire, so his trainer, Mickey Duff, brought Father Clark into the corner to offer some words of encouragement. The leg's starting to show a little sagging under Mugabe. He's tired now, Tim. It's Duffy does most of the time. Right. John, listen to Father tells you. Leaving you, John. John, you're giving up. You mustn't give up. You get the fight won. You want it, baby. You got it. Sit down. Okay, John. Believe in you. This is what you've been waiting for. Okay, John. You believe in you. Okay, well, no, not for me and not for him, for okay. yourself. Okay. Come on. Do it for yourself. Come on. Come on. Well, he had everybody but Newt Lockney in the corner there, <laughs> trying to pep up John Mugabe. Father Tony was there. John, listen to the father. You won't listen to me, listen to the father. Okay, John, we're on. We love you, John. We believe in you, baby. You're doing beautiful. Two rounds to go. Two one, rounds, You baby. can always do two rounds, John. But you've minutes. got to make the word. No, six okay. minutes Easy. if you do six minutes. Despite Clark's best efforts, Mugabe couldn't find his second wind, and he was knocked out in the 11th round. Mugabe finally goes down, and it's all over. He's just exhausted from the continual assault. Marvelous Marvin Hagler retains his undisputed middleweight championship of the world with an 11th round knockout over a game and exciting challenge from John Mugabe. During John Ruiz's fight with Andrew Galata, Norman Stone once again lived up to his reputation as a loose cannon and became the first trainer in boxing history to be ejected from a fighter's corner. <laughs>
Stone's infamous temper first showed up at the end of round one. When Ruiz and Galata continued to fight after the bell, Stone ran across the ring and threatened Galata's trainer, Sam Colonna. Now here's the first instance, and as Sam Colonna, the trainer for Andrew Galata, comes into the ring, Norman Stone <laughs> runs all the way across the ring, puts his hand on Colonna's chest, and pushes it. There's Stoney. From this point on, Stone used any chance he could get to voice his displeasure at the performance of the referee, Randy Newman. Ref, you gotta give us a shake here. You gotta give us a shake. When Newman called for a break in the fifth round because Ruiz's glove tape was loose, Stone claimed that Galata was hurt at the time of the break and launched a foul mouth tirade at Newman. All the time you want. And you stop it, fucking asshole. What a piece of shit you turned out to be. What a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> you got no fucking balls, you top sucker. Boy, that's a nice way to get on the referee's right side, get all the, the oh, close boy. calls. That should win some points. <laughs> no points, no points, no points. Despite being given a final warning at the end of the round, Stone continued to criticize Newman's performance in the corner. One more time, you're up. You're not doing your job. You're not doing your job. Randy Newman has told Stone. One more outburst like that, you're out of here. He ain't gonna do nothing for you, nothing at all. You understand? He ain't gonna do nothing for you. He's funny on the guy. It's a proven fact, all right? Go out and fight your fight. It's a proven fact. What is the referee supposed to do for the fighter? No excuse you look like shit. Ref's doing a terrible fucking job, Johnny. He don't know what he's doing. During a break in the eighth round because Ruiz's glove tape was once again loose, Stone directed another unsavory remark towards Newman after he refused to take the tape roll from him. Joe Ruiz needs to rest now. Fucking jerk off. <laughs> True to his word, Newman ordered the ringside security to remove Stone from the arena. Harold that? Letterman, our in-house historian, is saying that this is unprecedented in his view. He does not remember a trainer ever being thrown out of a corner. I'll sue you for every fucking thing you got, you fuck. On his way out of the arena, Stone hilariously denied even saying a single word to Newman, and he told Ruiz's promoter, Don King, that he thought the fight was fixed. I'm showing this every fucking thing he's got. Everything. What did I say to him? I didn't say a word to him. Please. Don't put your fucking I'm not putting my hands up, please. Stone watched the remainder of the fight in the locker room, and his occasional outburst were shown to the viewers. And Ruiz wanders a little not bit fuck. looking for his corner. And there's Norman Stone alone in the dressing room and not happy. Banished this, from Ruiz's definitely corner. Definitely, this is the worst referee I've ever seen in boxing. He hasn't taken a point away. He hit Johnny in the back of the head, knocked him down. Ruiz went on to win the fight by decision, and Stone was shown celebrating in the locker room. Well, the quiet man, John Ruiz. Get that kid in here, in the 1982 fight between Aaron Pryor and Alexis Arguello, Pryor's trainer, Panama Lewis, was heard asking for a mixed water bottle at the end of round two, and then again at the end of round 13. After drinking from the bottle at the end of round 13, Pryor seemed rejuvenated and stopped Arguello with a flurry of fast punches in the 14th round.
It's widely believed that the mixed water bottle Lewis used contained illegal stimulants, but because no post-fight urine test was given to Pryor, nothing was ever proven. At the end of the fifth round, Bruce Seldon's corner used the tubby physique of his opponent to motivate him. No, no, he's you shouldn't beat by a man with titties. Come on, man. You got him, Bruce. Got titties. He can't beat you, man. You got him. You got the beat you. Move around. Chris Algieri and trainer Tim Lane's game plan against Manny Pacquiao was to give away the first four rounds, up the offense in the middle rounds, and then knock Pacquiao out in the late rounds. Manny Pacquiao looks very fast in the first couple of rounds. Not only is he very fast, but he also is very tough. Down goes Algieri. Despite clearly losing every round, including being knocked down in round two and then twice in round six, Lane was repeatedly heard assuring Algieri that he was doing well and that Pacquiao was fading. Hey Chris, perfect. Yep. Everything is perfect. We got two more like this, okay? Chris, yep. still in round one. Yep. Nothing changes, okay? You're doing beautiful, baby. Everything, everything stays the same. Chris, he's disconnecting a little more each round, okay? This is where we dreamed of being. This is where we want to be. Chris. This guy is getting tired. Intrigued by their game plan, HBO commentator Max Kellerman went to Algeria's corner to interview Lane midway through the ninth round. During the interview, Lane showed that he had impeccable comedic timing. Max, Tim, we're talking a lot about the game plan in the corner. We heard you after two rounds tell him two more of those. And then you, yeah. what was the game plan coming in? Keep the distance. Keep the distance. Jab on him, let him get tired. He's getting tired, he's reaching. Was there an idea that after four rounds, something changes? Yeah. What was going to change? I'll tell you after. He's going to put him to sleep here in a few minutes. I'm going to let him go in. I'm, I'm going to let him go in, in one more round. I'm still, I got him in the cage right now. The, I'm let him out the cage. The plan is to have Algieri knock Pacquiao out. Yes, but I still got him in the cage. He listens to me very well. I'm going to let him loose in another round or so. Round 10? Round, round 10 or 11, I'm going to let him go. Difficult for the plan to materialize because there's a question now Seven. as to whether Eight. Algeria will be able Nine. to survive that shot, which was oh, yeah. a monster oh, yeah. left hand, a sensational oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. straight left, held for a little while, couldn't hold on long enough. It's Pacquiao who's out of his cage. Yeah. <laughs> After seven rounds against Brandon Rios, Teddy Atlas literally fired up Timothy Bradley with a pep talk that can only be described as scorching. Listen, your concentration is weaving a little bit. Pick it up. Okay. Pick it up! Okay. Don't pull straight out. Bend your knees and be strong on the inside and go around them. Let's control the outside. Look, the fire's coming. Are you ready for the fire? The, we're firemen. Okay. We are firemen! Got it, coach. The heat doesn't bother us. We live in the heat. We train in the heat. Yeah, let's go. It tells us that we're ready. We're at home. We're where we're supposed to be. Flames don't intimidate us. What do we do? We control the flame. We control them. We move the flame where we want to. And then we extinguish them. Bradley turned the heat up on Rios in the eighth round before extinguishing him with a body shot in the ninth round. And Teddy just gave him a football speech in the corner, and Tim responded to it. You could see it. He oh, was look at this. digging it. <laughs> look at this. It's like flipping a switch. He's taking a lot of punishment from a really good fighter Ooh. who is fighting his best. And Brandon can't even throw. Down again. That's going to be the end of the fight. Yep. Tony Weeks is going to wave it off. A knockout victory for Tim Bradley with 11 seconds left in round nine. In 1981, Ray Leonard and Thomas Hearns met in a world welterweight unification fight. At the end of the 12th round, Hearns had boxed his way to a considerable points lead on all three judges' scorecards, and Leonard's left eye was almost completely swollen shut. Sensing that the fight was slipping away, Leonard's trainer, Angelo Dundee, repeatedly told him in the corner that he was blowing it. You got nine minutes. You're blowing it now, son. You're blowing it. My eye was like a slit. I had no peripheral vision. Angelo kept saying to me, you're blowing it, kid. You're blowing it. You're blowing it. Break! I separate the man from the boys now, we're blowing it. Got to take it away from him, okay? Speed!
Leonard heeded Dundee's words and stormed out of the corner for the 13th round with bad intentions. I think Leonard has to fight a desperate fight. Good right hand. That Ernst was hurt again. Ernst was hurt. He's trying to hold on. No, the referee says it's not a knockdown. The referee says it is not a knockdown. Leonard keeps coming on. He's a fool. He's hitting on the brakes. He's doing everything. 12 seconds to go. Hearns is in desperate trouble. The bell cannot save him if he goes down. That is counted a knockdown. His time That's ran out. Bell. A big, big round, round. for Leonard. which he's not doing. No, oh, he's too weak. He has nothing left. He's going to be knocked out. And the referee Leonard is stopping the fight. It. The referee is stopping the fight. I don't believe this. Leonard has pulled it out in the true old-fashioned movie way. Kawagi returned after 10 years away from boxing and put his dubious 11-0 record on the line against Ramon Alejandro Olivas. Kawagi was sporting what looked to be oversized chest, bicep, and shoulder implants. Please welcome Jorge Kawagi!